Hey guys, Greg Benz here. In this video, you'll learn how to use the more advanced noise reduction tools available in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. I've already gone ahead to process this image to a pretty good degree. I've got in the background here a focus stack that I shot at the blue hour to get all this foreground detail in the rocks up through this arch. Then I've got a Milky Way shot that I took on the same night on a tripod to blend in for the sky and some finishing effects. Things look pretty good and I could post this to social media as it is, but if we zoom in, something becomes readily apparent. The arch looks pretty good because I shot that at ISO 100 for the blue hour, but the Milky Way is really noisy. I shot it at ISO 6400 because if I used a lower ISO, the stars would have blurred and started to streak in the sky. So I had to shoot at a much faster shutter speed and you have to deal with the consequences later, which we're going to do here by reducing the noise. To do that, I'm gonna double click on this image, which is a camera raw smart object. So we can go in and we'll click over on these two triangles for the details tab where we have both sharpening and noise reduction. These are broken down into the first four sliders for sharpening and then in noise reduction, the first three are luminance and the next three are color noise reduction. So there's really kind of three parts to this tab and they're all important because when you sharpen the image, you affect noise reduction. Let's zoom in to at least 100% in order to view these details and we can ignore what's going on in the rock here because in the blended image, we're only masking in the sky we're not touching this higher quality, low ISO rock from below. It's just the sky we need to think about here. So we'll get the sharpening done correctly first, and I'm gonna use deconvolution sharpening, something I go into great detail in another tutorial that I'll link next to this one, but briefly just set the radius to the minimum, detail to the max, and masking off for deconvolution. Then you can set the amount of the overall effect. If we increase it, we'll see a lot more noise in the image, and if we take it all the way down to zero, we help avoid adding any additional noise to this. I think a small amount of sharpening around maybe 10% will be helpful to this image to just give a little bit of an edge to these stars. So it's a very low amount. Typically I'd use much more, but I don't want to go all the way to zero in this image. Now for noise reduction, like I said, we have the first part, which is luminance and then color. Let's focus on luminance, which is the most important and really most noise you think about is going to be luminance noise, which looks like grain. The way these sliders work is the first one is essentially the amount. So luminance is really luminance amount, very much like the sharpening amount up above. And these next two sliders control the way that this tool works. So in order to use this, let's take the luminous noise reduction all the way to the maximum so we can see what's going on. And then we'll adjust these next two sliders, come back and finalize this one. So what you immediately see with the luminous noise reduction all the way up is that it's cleaning up the noise but Adobe Camera Raw is automatically avoiding areas of really fine detail or sharp detail like these stars, and you see that noise kind of coming around them. There's an automatic mask that's being applied to this image. You can control that mask to a degree using the detail slider. If you bring the detail all the way to the maximum, then you're providing the maximum protection to try and include things like these minor stars. And if you bring it all the way to the left, you're providing maximum noise reduction and you can see how there's no value where you can completely eliminate that mask. Even when the luminous detail is all the way down to the minimum here, it's still going to be masking out some of these stars. So unlike sharpening masking, which is truly off at zero, luminous detail at zero is still allowing some bit of mask and there's nothing you can really do about it. But in general, you don't wanna go all the way to the minimum on that anyway. So let's take this detail and zoom back a little bit on this and watch the stars we have here with no detail and max detail, it's bringing through all these minor stars. I don't think I necessarily want all of this detail, but let's bring it back maybe a quarter, see how that looks, or halfway and see how that looks. I think somewhere around 75 here has a nice balance of including some minor stars, but not too much of it. And of course things look a little artifacted right now, but you can ignore that because as we bring the amount down to match, it's gonna look more balanced. We're just trying to visualize what's being adjusted at this point. So don't be too hung up on the actual minutia of the artifacts right now. The luminous contrast, when we bring this up, it's offsetting some of the loss of contrast that occurs. So if we bring this to the max, watch what occurs in the image. You get all these little minor areas. So it's not quite background detail and it's not quite a star, but some minor stars do come through when you bring up this contrast. It also adds the appearance of sort of gases in the stars here. If we bring it off versus on, you see that subtle detail in the stars and just zooming back a little bit, off versus on, how it adds that appearance of 
a little extra detail in the image. So I think going somewhere in the middle here probably strikes a nice balance of including some of it, but not going all the way down to no contrast, which is the default. So I'm gonna leave it around this middle value here. And now that we've set these two sliders, we can dial in the overall amount of luminance. And let's make sure we zoom back into at least 100%. And as we bring this down, we'll just look to see how does the image look. At halfway, I've got quite a bit of noise, but certainly much better than the original starting point. So I think 50% is a good starting point. Let's bring it up a little further. If we go around 70%, I kind of like that result. We can go a little bit higher and it's starting to get a little bit soft and some of these artifacted edges are starting to show a bit. So I think right around 70 strikes the right balance of reducing as much noise as possible without showing any artifacts or other issues. If we wanted to reduce the noise even further than this, we'd have to jump to more advanced techniques such as stacking multiple images in Star Landscape Stacker, something that I do in another tutorial, which I'll link below this as well. But let's move down to the color noise reduction and take a look at how this works. Generally speaking, you can leave these sliders at their default and it'll be just fine, but it's helpful to understand how they work in case you have a more advanced or unique situation that needs them. The color slider is once again the amount and the next two sliders really control the fine details of how it works. So if we slide color all the way off, you're gonna see this very odd color to the image, something you wouldn't normally notice because by default, you have camera raw at 25% because most cameras use an RGGB filter known as a Bayer mosaic filter and it's inherently noisy because no single pixel captures all the color. So that's why you already have color noise reduction added to all your images. It's generally a very safe thing to do. And in general, I would never go below 25% unless you have something very unique, like a Fovian sensor or something like that. With my camera going to lower values always produces this ugly result. But you might want to go to higher values. Regardless, let's set it up high because the next two sliders will be easier to visualize when we have the color already at the maximum. Color detail is gonna look at fringed edges. Let's move around and find a star that shows some level of color on the edges. If we turn the color detail up a little bit higher, maybe easier to visualize for a second. And let's zoom in on this star as an example. You can see the edges have some color to them. When the color detail's up very high, you see that color. If we bring the color detail all the way down, you're gonna see that that goes away. It's removing that color from the edges. As we bring this up high, you'll also notice that you have these little spotty areas around it. So setting very high levels of color detail tends to be a little bit like turning off color noise and adds the spotty bad noise everywhere, but setting it all the way to the minimum is going to eliminate areas where you might want a little bit of color at the fringe, or if we had some sort of colored light and it was glowing, we'd remove some of the glow. So generally speaking, the default 50 is a pretty good place to set this most of the time, but it's helpful to slide this up or down and see if you're improving the image. Just know that as you bring it down, you may lose a little bit of glow, and as you bring it up, you may add some of that background noise. So we can bring this up a little bit, and you can see that's not really helpful because it's not the true color of the star. So I think right around the 50 mark is a good place to leave this slider. Next up is the color smoothness, and we'll zoom back a little bit in order to see this one. What it's gonna do is take areas of color, zoom a little further here, and try and get a more smooth transition. So watch the colors in the pink clouds here. When color smoothness is off, you get this blotchy look where we've got more pinks, more kind of teal color. The middle of the gases here have changed quite a bit. So if we go and smooth out that color, we get this. And if we don't smooth it, we get something like this. So bring it to the left can bring out small areas of fine color detail over a a moderate range. The detail's really pixel level. Smoothness is a little bit larger areas. Something right in the middle generally strikes a pretty good balance, but if you had an image where you try to really neutralize the color over a larger area, you might then want to go to larger settings up top here. In this image, I'm not seeing much of a difference and I'm going to leave it right at 50. So at this point, we finished the noise reduction. We've done our deconvolution up top. We did our critical luminance noise reduction by setting the detail and contrast while viewing luminance at 100 and then dialing it into the proper amount. Same thing with color. We adjusted the bottom two sliders with color set at the max. We now need to bring this down to the correct amount. Let's zoom in even closer on some of these stars and see when we're down at the minimum, we're gonna have a little bit of color edging and a little bit higher where you remove that. I think in this case, I'm gonna go for kind of a middle value. I wanna remove some of the edges of these stars, which shows a little bit of false coloration but not entirely eliminated. If we move around 
to other areas of the sky here, we'll probably find something like this star, which has a bit of a blue edge that I like. If we bring it all the way up, we're gonna eliminate that edge. So I wanna keep just a little bit of some of this individual coloration on these stars. So I'm gonna leave all the color sliders right in the middle around 50 for this image. Go ahead and click OK. And just hitting Command Z to toggle from before, where we have the noisy image, to after. You can see how we've dramatically cleaned up our sky and have a much better match now between the sky and the rocks. Of course, it's not perfect, and that's just the nature of an ISO 64 image. So if you want to take things further, check out my tutorial on Starry Landscape Stacker, and be sure to click subscribe to be notified as I continue to release new Photoshop tutorials on this channel.